Now that you've experienced RGB and CMYK color modes, let's take a look at another way of representing color. I'll go up to the image menu under mode and change to lab color. Notice over here in the channels palette that we have three new channels, lightness A and B, or lab for short. The lightness channel stores the detail in the image and it's similar to a black and white photograph or a grayscale image. The A and B channels store all of the color information. And just like with the other color modes that we've seen, it's the composite of these three channels that creates the overall image. So why do we care about this? Why would we ever use lab color? To understand that, we need to talk about color gamut. And I've created this image here, taken from the Photoshop help. This diagram shows the different range of colors available in each of the color systems. So in lab color, represented here by this dotted line, you have the largest range of colors, or largest gamut. RGB is represented by this triangle, and it's quite a bit smaller, so it represents fewer colors than you can get out of lab. An interesting side note is that you're looking at a computer monitor right now and it's displaying everything to you in RGB. So when you store an image file in lab color you can actually represent a wide range of colors that you can't see on the monitor. It may be possible to print those colors however. Also notice that CMYK represented by this polygon partially overlaps RGB. It's a bit smaller over here in the green area, but you can actually represent a few extra colors over here. But both RGB and CMYK fit within lab. So it's because of this relationship that we often use lab color when we're retouching photographs.